This is a talk about listening, which I'll admit does seem a bit incongruous, but I'm here to champion listening and the potential of the connections that it creates to ourselves and each other. Lots of defin definitions of listening focus on sound, but listening is not the same thing as hearing. Listening is a choice to tune in physically, but what we tune into goes beyond the arbitrary chaos of the sounds around us. By coincidence, I went for Chinese food a couple of days ago, and at the end of the meal, got this fortune cookie. The message, people will listen to what you say, acknowledges the fact that hearing and listening are different. It's a given that people with an earshot of me might hear what I'm saying, but listening is something else. It's something more valuable. We're listening when a friend's account of their partner's infidelity reveals more about their own fear of repeating their parents' mistakes than their other half's transgressions. Or when a transformative piece of music creates space for us to miss an old friend who's fallen out of touch. Listening, unlike hearing, is not just about an external stimulus. It's what happens when we dial out of the static of the world around us and make room for the powerful messages that come from places within us that Audre Lorde calls are ancient and hidden, where our deepest non-rational knowledge lives. At the heart of listening is a physical process. So instead of talking about it, I thought we could actually do some listening. So for the next 60 seconds, you're all going to tune in and I'm going to count down. Done. <laughs> How did that feel? Standing on stage, it was, to be frank, pretty awkward. Um, <laughs> and even though I planned this talk, and obviously that whole section of it, it struck me, you know, how unusual it is for us to be in public and do nothing. Not only that, but also to really account and allot time to the unknown. Listening is hard. And also, for me, standing on stage, it brought up a lot of anxiety about how this talk is going, if you're enjoying it, all my own kind of feelings of imposter syndrome that, to be frank, I'd, quite ra I'd rather just avoid. This kind of minute of silence is also something that we're familiar with in our own culture. It's that, you know, it's this communal act of respect that we'll do in the wake of human tragedy. It's a moment where we sacrifice our own need for expression to make room for the voices of the dead and to reflect on those lives lost. With little to distract us, and plenty of social pressure provided by group behavior were really pushed into this state of reflection. We might also have memories of listen being barked at us as a boundary or a threat by exhausted parents, teachers, partners, those around us who are expecting to be understood and not just heard. Listen is a warning or sometimes the final straw when communication is no longer working. It's a battle cry that calls our more perceptive human understanding beyond just functional hearing. So listening doesn't have a great reputation, and even when we do do it, we're often confronted with emotional truths that we'd rather not be in touch with. But much like wild swimming, where the first 30 seconds is a brutal affront to the senses, and then afterwards you kind of enjoy it, I'm really here to champion listening and what happens when we stay in that uncomfortable state. Because knowing how we feel and what we want is the precious base metal of our lives. And it's something that listening puts us in touch with. Listening is a practice. It's an ongoing process that takes us to the root of things. And at that root is an underground network of emotions and feelings that connect us beyond society's superficial separations. As a director, my goal is to make work that does that. Films that connect us through emotional truths and resonating out of heartfelt specificity into deep pools of communal emotion. 
films where we want to listen, both to the story being told and the emotional response to it that rises from deep within. The myths that sit across the bedrocks of our human experience do just that. These, well these have well-documented similarities in structure, character, symbology that are proof of the depths in, the sh in our shared experience. Oral history is how many of these stories have survived, but that process was only possible through listening. Those seated around campfires or on long walks to fresh water were empowered by listening, showing up next time transformed from the listener to the teller, adding their own spin in its retelling. Today, so much of the focus in our productivity culture is with the storyteller, and we pay little attention and indeed respect to those on the other side. But this is a problem, because stories and the human connection they foster only work when the so cycle of storyteller and story listener remains intact. In listening to other people's stories, we make space for their individual experiences, while simultaneously finding our own in the common ground that lies between the separations imposed on us by society. Here, we can learn, reflect, identify, build empathy and understanding. Stories teach us to listen, opening up the potential to connect to ourselves. These are transformative experiences and ones that we seek to impart on the listeners of our own tales. This is a cycle that binds us together as a collective, building bridges into infinite new numbers of common ground. I first got introduced to the importance of listening during a stint of freelance creative direction at the London nightclub Ministry of Sound. As the name might suggest, Ministry's whole USP is sound. The main room, the box, is a wooden space with four massive speakers in each corner. And here, along with the controlled substances attendees may or may not be taking, sound is used to create an immersive physical experience that goes far beyond hearing. Much like the minute of silence, the box is an extreme space where you're immersed in a new kind of social contract. So high impact sound overwhelms the senses and opens the doors of perceptions to messages that rise from deep within or desires that society might otherwise tell you to ignore. After working with the team at the club, I came to understand that listening was their story. It was what they offered attendance, along with the DJs, drugs, and the thrill of other people's bodies, was the chance to connect deeply with ourselves and each other. Today, in my work as a director, I know that listening has become my most important creative skill. Listening to my collaborators, my subjects, my team, and my instincts is how I make work. End of story, no pun intended, but without listening, there is no film. This, the dated vision of the autocratic auteur whose singular vision moves mountains is not real and does not work. We have seen the world through the limited vision of this singular white male gaze for long enough. The breakdown of the notion of a shared truth in our society in recent history is testimony to what happens when the stories we tell don't lean into communal experiences and shared emotions. Recently, I co-directed Coming Home. It's a film I made with a dear friend, Naeem Neef, about Freedom Debka Group, a group of Palestinian-American folk dancers who, based in Brooklyn, New York, who use the traditional Debka dance to connect to their homeland and their community. The film was made during the second half of the pandemic from October to January 2020. And as you can imagine, we spent a lot of that process working remotely. I was in London, Naeem and our subjects were in New York. And in this dynamic, listening became paramount because we're telling a story that's based in a city I can't get to and about a culture I'm not a part of. Despite living in New York for the previous three years and holding a valid O-1 visa, Trump's COVID travel ban meant I wasn't able to get into the city to meet Amir and the rest of the team. I'm also, as you might have guessed, not Palestinian-American, unlike Naeem, whose family originally from Ramallah and grew up between Tampa, Florida and the West Bank. This was a culture I wasn't familiar with, besides what I had seen on the news and absorbed in pop culture. But as anyone who was in the UK over that 2021-2022 winter remembers, London went into another lockdown. And in this choir, without the distractions of the outside world, I was able to listen deeper. And that's what I did. I listened to Naeem, who was amazingly generous with his personal experiences and insights. I listened to Serene, our associate producer and Debka academic, Kenny, our cinematographer, a second-generation Bosnian-American with a political science major, 
Aika, our editor, who'd recently moved from Tokyo to Los Angeles, and a whole myriad of other podcasts, films, books, and collaborators who brought this film to life, each one recounting their own experience, their own story, and their own perspective. And in all this listening, Naeem and I found a story about belonging, a universal theme that touches all of our lives. The need to belong is huge. It's an active process that we foster through relationships, traditions, and time. Freedom Debka Group cultivate belonging through dance, and this was the most important listening we had to do, because at the end of the day, Coming Home is a film about them. The emotional reality of their lives is where the film takes place. Beyond the headlines and social media, we wanted to hero the familial bonds between them, their love of dance, and their dual intimacy with both Palestine and Brooklyn. In, in focusing on the emotional experiences, we told this story in a shared language. Feelings of hope, melancholy, joy, love. These are things that we can all relate to, but are often the things you can only hear when you're close up. But by listening to them and following this theme of belonging that came up again and again, we were able to make a film that both those within the community and outside of it could connect to. By telling a story that's rarely seen, beyond the hearsay and cliches, we're giving audiences the chance to tell their own new stories about their relationship with belonging and also about the Palestinian-American experience. We had our world premiere at South by Southwest Film Festival, and this year, after being acquired by PBS, the film will be broadcast into homes in the US. However this film gets to people, we hope that it might be able to contribute to a deeper understanding of ourselves and each other. I was not the only one impacted by the quiet that followed the COVID-19 pandemic. For the first time, millions of, us, millions of us paused and were asked to reflect on our own lives, societies, and social norms. From the global uprisings around racial injustice to the mass exodus of corporate jobs, we should not question the power of listening to ourselves and the stories around us. This period of listening has created a cultural shift whose impact will long outlast us. The act of listening may seem humble, but it connects us to a consciousness that is bigger and bolder than all we could ever dream of. And in this process is a special kind of hope one where our emotional needs are connected because we see they are communal, where our understanding of power shifts because we can see it is inherently shared, and where the often destructive notion of the individual is challenged through empathy. So here's to listening. Thank you very much.